Hello, everyone. I'm Zach Hilberger, and um, I was reading uh, some comments on YouTube, and um, a, a particular video of a biblical bent, and um, somebody commented something like, "If you wanted to, if you want to learn the Bible, read or listen to so and so, or or listen to so and so." And, and I got to thinking, okay, well, I replied to that and I said, if you want to learn about the Bible, then read the Bible. Uh, it sounds like really simple, but uh, uh, so that, that's what I wrote. And then uh, I think the Holy Spirit just uh, really kind of led me through something. And um, so I'm going to continue reading uh, um, what I think is, is, a really useful insight into, you know, not only reading the Bible, but understanding better what it says. That there is one message throughout the whole thing, and it's logically consistent. Prayerfully read Genesis through Revelation. Once you are done, open up to Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1, and read to Revelation 22, 21, Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. And once you have read Revelation 22, 21, go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and read all the way through to Revelation 22, 21. Each time you read it, it will take longer and longer to get through it because your mind will make all these amazing connections and the Holy Spirit of truth will reveal to you the heart of yod heh vav -Heh and his son. It is a simple message that a five-year-old can understand, and yet it is incredibly vast and deep the more you read it. It is easy to get lost in the word, but I think it is important to actually do the works that it commands us to do, to love yod heh vav -Heh. I, I'm saying you know, yod heh vav -Heh, um, which is the Hebrew Tetra grammaton, which is, you know, yod hey vav hey Hebrew. Um, I, you know, I'm not 100% sure how to actually pronounce his name, which is what God actually prophesied to us um, in the word. So uh, there you have it. But anyway, um, I'll, I'll start back over again. It is a simple message that a five-year-old can understand, and yet it is incredibly vast and deep the more you read it. It is easy to get lost in the word, but I think it is important to actually do the works that it commands us to do, to love Yodhibabe, to love one another as our very selves, and obey his Torah as best we understand it, in love, mercy, and forgiveness, to honor what Yeshua did for us, and the reference 1 John 4, 7 through 5, 5. As you read, you will begin to distinguish what is divine and what is man-made. Make it a practice to discern what is man-made and carefully consider it in light of the teaching found in Genesis through Revelation. As I read it, it tells me to stop celebrating Christmas and Easter since yod heh -Vav -Heh did not instruct us to observe such things and there are verses that actually forbid us from observing them. And the verses that I'm referring to is Deuteronomy 6, 13, 10, 20, 12, 30 through 31, Matthew 4, 10, 1 Samuel 7, 3, and Luke 4, 8, among others, of course. In other words, Christmas and Easter are man-made. When you can discern what is divine and what is man-made doctrines and traditions, then much of the confusion in Matthew through Revelation disappears. Examples that I give are Matthew 15 and Mark 7, which are two tellings of the same event. Mark 13, 14, and 14, 3. Matthew 12, 2, which is coupled with Luke 6, 1. And um, to, 
get more insight on this inner in this passage, see Deuteronomy 23, 25, which I think will be quite illuminating. Um, then Matthew 12, 10, and John 9, 13 through 16. Remember, a mixed multitude um, of a, a mixed multitude of approximately three million people stood in front of a certain mountain and simultaneously and audibly heard God speak and survived. No other ism, you know, ism like uh, atheism or atheism or all these things, no other ism can claim such a mass revelation of Yorhevahi or any God. And in parentheses, it is almost always one person claiming they heard God speak, which means it has essentially zero credibility and relies almost completely on the charisma slash persuasiveness of the claimant and possibly also being able to harness demonic forces in order to gain followers. So there was some um, uh, in regard to the mixed multitude, there's a, a large number of verses. So I'm going to read through this again, but I'll include the uh, verses. Um, remember, a mixed multitude, Exodus 12, 38, and verse 49. So it's uh, Exodus 12, Exodus chapter 12, verse 38 and 49. Numbers 15, 14 through 16, and 29 through 30. So that's Numbers chapter 15, verses 14 through 16, and 29 through 30. Leviticus 24, 22. Galatians 3, 28. Romans 3, 22, and verse 29. Isaiah 56, 1 through 8. 1 Corinthians 7 through 19, and uh, 12, 13. So it's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19, and chapter 12, verses 13, verse 13. Colossians 3, 11, Ezekiel 47, 22, Romans 10, 12. Um, so remember, a mixed multitude, and then all the, the uh, references, of approximately 3 million people stood in front of a certain mountain and simultaneously and audibly heard Yohevavhe speak and survived. And this is found uh, especially among other places, but especially among Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 through chapter 5, verse 33, uh, which I'll read momentarily. It's such a, uh, a wonderful passage. Again. No other ism can claim such a mass revelation of Yodhivabi or any God for that matter. It is almost one person claiming they heard God speak, which means it has essentially zero credibility and relies almost completely on the charisma and the persuasiveness of the claimant, the person who's making the claim that they heard God speak, and possibly being able to harness demonic forces in order to gain followers. So if you can, you know, produce, you know, signs and wonders, you know, false signs and wonders, uh, you can, you know, gain followers. So um, go to uh, Deuteronomy. I'm going to do a screen share here. Um, and this is Deuteronomy. Hear now, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances I am teaching you to follow, so that you may live and may enter and take possession of the land Yehovah, the God of your fathers, has given you. You must not add to or subtract from what I command you, so that you may keep the commandments of Yehovah, your God, that I am giving you. So this is Moses speaking. Your eyes have seen what? Yohevav did at Baal Peor, for Yohevav your God destroyed from among you all who followed the Baal of Peor. Uh, so they, they followed after another God, which he told us not to do. 
but you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive to this day, every one of you. Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances, just as Jehovah my God has commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are about to enter and possess. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear of all of these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is great enough to have a God as near to them as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call on him? And what nation is great enough to have righteous statutes and ordinances like this entire law I set before you today? Only be on your guard and diligently watch yourselves so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen so that they will not slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren the day you stood before the Lord your God at Mount Horeb. The Lord said to me, gather the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may teach them to their children. You, all you, and this is three million people, you know, it's approximately, you know, Three million people, a mixed multitude of uh, you know natural born uh, Israelites and all these other people who are smart enough to get the heck out of uh, Dodge um, uh, coming out of Egypt, which had been destroyed. Um, you came near me and stood at the base of the mountain, a mountain blazing with fire to the heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard you heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to follow, the Ten Commandments that he wrote on two tablets of stone. At that time, Jehovah commanded me to teach you the statutes and ordinances you are to follow in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Since you saw no form of any kind on the day the Lord spoke to you out of the fire at, at Horeb, be careful that you do not act corruptly, corruptly and make an idol for yourselves in any form or shape, whether the likeness of a male or female, of any beast that is on the earth or bird that flies in the air or of any creature that crawls on the ground or fish that is in the waters below. When you look to the heavens and see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the hosts of heaven, do not be enticed to bow down and worship what the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven. Yet the Lord has given you, yet the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace out of Egypt to be the people of his inheritance as you are today. So Hevavhe, however, was angry with me on account of you, and he swore that I would not cross the Jordan to enter the good land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For I will not be crossing the Jordan because I must die in this land, but you shall cross over and take possession of that good land. Be careful that you not forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you, do not make an idol for yourselves in the form of anything he has, he has forbidden you. For Jehovah your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have children and grandchildren and you have been in the land a long time, if you then act corruptly and make an idol of any form, doing evil in the sight of Jehovah your God and provoking him to anger, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you this day that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live long upon it, but will be utterly destroyed. And yod will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which yod will drive you. And there you will serve man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you will seek your, Jehovah your God, you will find him 
if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul, when you are in distress, all these things have happened to you and, and all these things have happened to you. Then in later days, you will return to Yehovah your God and listen to his voice. For Yehovah your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers, which he swore to them by oath. Indeed, ask now from one end of the heavens to the other about the days that long preceded you from the day that God created man on earth. Has anything as great as this ever happened or been reported? Has a people ever heard the voice of God speaking out of the fire as you have and lived? Or has any God tried to take as his own a nation out of another nation by trials, signs, and wonders, and war, by a strong hand and an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, as you provide your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. You were shown these things so that you would know that Yohebabe is God and there is no others beside him. He let you hear his voice from heaven to di discipline you and on earth he showed you his great fire and you heard his words out of the fire because he loved your fathers he chose their descendants after them and brought you out of Egypt by his presence and great power to drive out before you nations greater and mightier than you and to bring you into their land and give it to you for your inheritance as, as it is this day. Know therefore and take to heart that Jehovah is God in heaven above and on the earth below. There is no other. Keep his statutes and commandments, which I'm giving you today, so that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may live long in the land that Jehovah your God is giving you for all time. And this is actually um, uh, what what Spock is saying when he does the, you know, the, the Vulcan thing. He, he's actually quoting uh, uh, this live long and prosper. And uh, here, let me see, I'll skip ahead here. I'm going to jump to uh, chapter five. Then Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinance that I declare in your hearing to this day, in your hearing this day. Learn them and observe them carefully. For Yehovah your God has made a covenant with us at Horeb. He did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with all of us who are alive here today. Yehovah spoke with you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time, I was standing between Yehovah and you to declare to you the word of Yehovah because you were afraid of the fire and would not go up on the mountain. And he said, I am Yehovah your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You cannot make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, Yehovah your Elohim, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers to their children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving devotion to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for, the, for Jehovah will not leave anyone unpunished who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as Jehovah your Elohim has commanded you. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yehovah your Elohim, on which you must not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox or donkey, or any of your livestock, nor the foreigner within your gates, so that your manservant 
and may serve it, may rest as you do. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. That is why Yehovah your Elohim has commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as Yehovah your Elohim has commanded you so that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land Yehovah your Elohim is giving you. No murder, no adultery, no steal, no perjury. I'm, I'm saying it in uh, as close to the actual Hebrew because the Hebrew, you know, it literally says no murder, no adultery, no steal, uh, no perjury. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's house or field or his manservant or maidservant or his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Jehovah spoke these commandments in a loud voice to your whole assembly out of the fire, the cloud, and the deep darkness on the mountain. He added nothing more. He wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And when you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was blazing with fire, all the heads of your tribes and your elders approached me and said, Behold, Jehovah Elohim has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks with him. But now why should we die? For this great fire will consume us and we will die if we hear the voice of Yehovah our God any longer. For who of all flesh has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God has said. Then you can tell us everything Yehovah our Elohim tells you. We will listen and obey. And the Lord heard these words you spoke to me. And he said to me, this is Moses speaking, I have heard the words that these people have spoken to you, Moses. They have done well in all that they have spoken. If only they had such a heart to fear me and to keep all my commandments always so that it might be well with them and that they're and with their children forever. Go and tell them, return to your tents, but stand here with me that I may speak to you all the commandments and statutes and ordinances you are to teach them to follow in the land that I am giving them to possess. So be careful to do as Yehovah your Elohim has commanded you. You are not to turn aside to the right or to the left. You must walk in all the ways that, that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong, prolong the days and the land that you will possess. So in verse 33, the last verse here says, you must walk in. So don't turn to the right or to the left, but walk in all the ways that Yehovah your Elohim has commanded you so that you may live long and prosper along your days in the land that you will possess. And I, I think that's uh, uh, closely connected to, um, you know, uh, Walk the, the narrow path that leads to salvation for broad and wide is the road that leads to destruction. And uh, but narrow is the way and uh, small is the gate or narrow is the gate that leads to life and few will find it. So I think this is this is closely connected to Deuteronomy 533. You, know, you must walk in all the ways that you fly to God has commanded you so that you may live long and prosper. So go and live long and prosper. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, um, I just, I, I just thought that was uh, really powerful. And so I just uh, thank you for your time and, and may Yahweh bless you and protect you and uh, live long and prosper.